Okay, so welcome this evening. We are with the Green Infrastructure Center and we were hired by the city of Boca Raton to help map the city's canopy and calculate its benefits. Uh, so this assessment supports many of the goals that are already existing in the city, the Sustainability Action Plan, Project Shade Tree, the Comprehensive Plan, the City Council Resolution to support the Kyoto Protocol on Climate Change, the Southeast Florida Coastal Resiliency Partnership, and many others. So there's a number of different goals within the Sustainability Action Plan that this project meets, such as reducing greenhouse gases, maintaining improving air and water quality, increasing tree canopy cover, and increasing wildlife habitat. Next. So canopy trees are a community priority. You guys have already been at Tree City USA for 41 years. Trees are an, a really important solution uh, to address the numerous goals and priorities for the city's sustainability. And you've already been involved with a number of different organizations such as the Boca Raton Beautification Committee, Recreation Services, the Office of Sustainability and Community Greening. So there's many benefits to doing this work, mapping tree canopy, determining options for where you might expand it, also modeling the benefits that canopy provides and tree canopy goal setting. So what is green infrastructure? Well, on the left-hand side, we have gray infrastructure and that's uh, what we often think of when we're uh, doing city planning, you know, roads and sidewalks and power lines and pipelines. But what we're really looking at tonight is the green infrastructure. And that is literally the green stuff. It's the trees, it's, it's the um, wetlands, it is uh, the shrubs, it's all of that green stuff that helps absorb stormwater, clean the air and shade the city. That definition was expanded in 1994 when um, uh, EPA actually expanded the definition that Florida created. So in 1994, the state of Florida coined the term green infrastructure to describe its wetlands, rivers, dunes, and forest habitats. And then in 2006, EPA added other what we call constructed green infrastructure, such as rain gardens and permeable pavers to the definition. The key is to first consider natural infrastructure and protect it first then you can mitigate the impacts from the built environment. So in short, first conserve as much of the green as you can, and then you can use constructed green infrastructure to mitigate some of the impacts. So trees are really the best green infrastructure. We haven't designed or engineered anything that works better than a tree. So a tree can intercept anywhere from 760 gallons to 4,000 gallons per tree per year of stormwater, depending on what type of tree it is and how old it is. Trees also create healthy communities, so access to fitness opportunities, cleaning the air, as I said, even uh, mental health, they uh, help us heal faster when we can even just see green, less crime occurs near trees, and employees will exercise and get outside if there's green near where they're working. Job development, uh, we see this a lot with uh, people being more mobile during COVID, people are really looking at where they want to live and being able to relocate, and they're looking for green communities. So as we build more parks and have more green in our neighborhoods, we will actually attract more jobs. And then also trees provide more attractive areas for development. And we, uh, there's been a number of studies that looked at shopping and behaviors. And it turns out people spend about 12% more money when it's a tree lines shopping district. So if we spend a little money to make sure our trees stay healthy as uh, street trees, we'll actually get that money back and improve tax revenues. So turning it over to Matt Lee to tell us more about how much canopy we have. Great, thank you, Karen. Um, so in, in order to determine how much canopy we have, we used uh, aerial photography to classify the land cover into different categories, so tree canopy, impervious surfaces, such as buildings, streets, and parking lots. But there were some challenges to mapping uh, canopy. So since the imagery was collected in uh, November of 2019, new development has occurred, so that it could have removed some of the trees. Um, we also counted mangroves uh, as part of the urban tree canopy, but sometimes they're treated as wetlands. And then South Florida has a lot of very tall grasses, um, which are, are known as palm trees. And these don't necessarily provide the same level of ecosystem services or benefits as uh, trees do. So the Boca Raton's tree canopy is 26.5%. 
And you can see in this pie chart the breakdown of the other types of land cover um, within the city. So about 46% for impervious surfaces and about another about 21% pervious with some other categories making up the remainder. We also looked um, at the different land cover percentages by watershed. Uh, so you can see the variability uh, across different watersheds. And this will ultimately help us um, when we start talking about stormwater and flooding impacts. But you can see that the Hillsborough Canal watershed as a percentage of tree canopy is slightly higher than some areas of the city, such as Lake Ida or Boca Raton Everglades watershed. We know that larger trees provide more benefits per year than medium or smaller trees. And here on the chart on the left, you can see the breakdown of the different costs uh, and benefits for the different trees uh, and their life expectancies. One of the interesting things about this is the uh, palm trees have lower benefits and greater costs um, than a regular tree. So one of the reasons for that is palm trees have a greater nutritional requirement than most other species. And so that um, increased the amount of costs of maintaining them per year. So urban forests provide many types of ecosystem services. Some examples include capture stormwater runoff, air quality benefits, shade and reduced temperatures, carbon sequestration, aesthetics, community health, wildlife habitat, increased property values, and buffering against storms. And we know as land cover changes, so does stormwater infiltration. So the il illustration on the left shows a uh, natural forest. And so most of the water is being evaporated back out into the atmosphere uh, or translocated through the tree. Um, and the rest is kind of, the other half is being infiltrated into the groundwater. So very little is actually running off. And as we increase the amount of impervious surfaces, so we build more buildings, we build more roads and sidewalks, um, more of that rainfall is running off as um, uh, running off into the streams and rivers uh, and carrying with it a lot of pollution and debris and litter and, and less of it's infiltrating back into the groundwater. So urban tree canopy um, provide is a great solution at reducing and mitigating stormwater. So we know from studies that about 20% of annual rainfall or greater is retained in the crown. And this can result in delays of runoff up to 3.7 hours. And tree roots are really great at helping to increase the infiltration capacity of soil. So getting that stormwater flowing back down into the groundwater. So for the city, uh, non-point source pollution uh, for the watershed, total stormwater capture and infiltration for a one year 24 hour rainfall event, which is about 4.67 inches, is 33.1 million gallons of water. And annually, that prevents about 18,000 pounds of nitrogen, 1,400 pounds of phosphorus, and 2,400 tons of sediment from entering local waterways, canals, and streams. We also calculated the air quality benefits of certain air pollutants, so carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, particulate matter, sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, both sequestration and storage. And you can see the values in pounds per year. Note that the carbon uh, dioxide storage is not an annual rate, but a total storage. So the uh, Boca Raton's urban tree canopy is storing about 1.1 billion pounds of carbon dioxide within its uh, tissues and leaves. And it's sequestering annually about 47 million pounds per year. So that's um, a lot of pounds of carbon that are being sequestered out of the atmosphere and mitigating some of those climate impacts um, that are being produced by greenhouse gases from regular day activities of driving cars and um, electric bills and et cetera. So it's a really great climate solution. We also looked at urban heat islands and you can see as temperature increases, um, urban tree canopy tends to decrease and impervious surfaces increase. So we know that the more impervious surfaces, the hotter the surface temperature, whereas tree canopy has the opposite effect. And in the map here, you can see of the, the hottest places within the city. So we can be strategic about planting trees and potentially mitigate some of those hot spots um, because we know 
projected um, his, well, historically, the, the city of Boca Raton has had about 28 days per year over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But it's projected by mid century that this is going to increase to 121 days per year. And by end of century, 150 days per year, 157 days per year, which is almost half the year. So anything we can do now to plant trees to mitigate future heat will be really important for future generations. We also have analyzed the tree canopy by streets, and this will help to uh, mitigate some of those uh, heat impacts, um, but it will also help to make certain neighborhoods more walkable so the city can target low canopy streets uh, for tree plantings uh, and find areas in the right of way that can support trees more easily. We also looked at schools uh, and places for planting trees. So we know that exposure to green spaces for just 20 minutes increases children's IQ and readiness to learn. And children with ADHD have shown better attention with nature exposure um, during the school day. So the more trees that we can plant uh, on school grounds uh, and engage the students uh, in learning about trees and planting trees, the more successful we'll be at engaging the community to increase the urban tree canopy cover as well as uh, increase the uh, development of children within our school systems. We also analyze the tree canopy by uh, the different parks within the city. Um, and so here we have a list of all the different parks and the different percentage, percentages of tree canopy. And so the city can be strategic about uh, finding plantable areas uh, within their parks and increasing tree canopy cover. So finding those parks where there's available space to plant trees that already have low tree cover. So we've mapped the possible planting areas within the city, um, and we've done this by watershed as well as those different um, boundaries like parks and schools and streets. And we can use that information to target plantings um, so that they're more successful and we're getting trees into those low canopy neighborhoods. So to figure out where to plant trees, we first map the land cover so we know the existing conditions and we um, find the pervious lands where we can fit trees. So we exclude some of those athletic fields and land uses like golf courses and cemeteries where you're not gonna wanna plant trees. And we find those plantable areas. We plop trees down uh, within those spaces to grow out a potential canopy area so we can find out what is the maximum potential tree canopy the city can have. So this is just a rendering of what possible planting areas look like. So here's a, just a general median. That space is identified as possible planting area. We drop a tree there to see if it fits, and it does. And so we can grow that tree out, and we can fi figure out and calculate how much additional tree canopy the city could add to its landscape. And there are many spots where trees can be added. So along right-of-ways, um, here you can see a recreational and bicycle trail where trees can be added to shade um, walkers and bikers, as well as opportunities to help communities uh, with uh, residents plant trees in their front yards or backyards. And the city and residents are planting trees. So the picture on the left is the city planting trees in uh, public parks. And then here are a couple of pictures from uh, residential landowners who are adding trees uh, onto their properties. And so these will grow into future canopy and provide those ecosystem service benefits we talked about. And then there's also trees being planted in other um, green infrastructure facilities. So on the left, you see uh, a stormwater bioswale where trees have been planted. So this will help not only collect stormwater, but the trees will help it infiltrate further and deeper into the ground, as well as pull some of that water out and into the atmosphere. Um, so you can see in these two pictures here in the left in the center, the trees really providing additional benefits to these bioswales. And then you see here on the right, a resident has paved their driveway with permeable pavers. So they're really helping to reduce that imperviousness and help infiltrate um, stormwater into the ground through best practices. So with this information, we can set a canopy goal. So what are we trying to achieve? Are we trying to stop canopy loss? Are we trying to increase canopy cover, beautify neighborhoods, shade areas, improve community health, mitigate stormwater, all of the above? And with VOCA, it's yes to all of the above. So we're trying to do all of these things. 
um, and to meet the above needs and stem losses, the city plans to increase canopy cover. So we need to set a goal. So increasing tree canopy cover from 26.5% to 28% by 2041 is a recommendation that the Green Infrastructure Center is making for the city of Boca Raton. That is a 1.5% increase citywide, which requires planting about 50,000 trees or 2,500 trees per year over the next 20 years. So a, a very achievable goal. Um, public lands and right of way make up approximately 22% of the city's land cover and the rest is private property. So there will need to be a uh, um, local capacity building by encouraging residents to plant trees on private property. So the city can do its part by planting on parks and right of ways and encouraging policies to reduce impervious um, cover like in this parking lot, but the um, private citizens and residents will need to also help out by planting trees uh, on private property. So that in involves engaging the community in tree planting campaigns. So what tree benefits do you value most? And how should the city prioritize tree planting, uh, planting trees within the campaign? And so some possible options include schools, parks, low-income neighborhoods, business districts, parking lots and plazas, along streets. Um, and if you were to, as a resident and citizen, if you were, want a tree in your yard, what, is, what type of assistance do you need to get that tree? Do you need to help paying for the tree? Do you need to help delivering it, planting it? Do you need instructions for its maintenance and care? Um, so all different ways that you can be engaged and involved in the campaign. So I'm elderly, so I need help planting. I want a fixed income, so a donated tree would help me. I don't know a lot about tree care, but I want to learn and help. So this is where public feedback is important. So there's a public feedback survey that we'll be sending the link out in the chat box too. You can also find the link at the VOCA Sustainable Tree Maintenance website. Um, it's about 10 questions and takes about five to 10 minutes to complete the survey based on your speed. And a summary of the public responses will be included in the final report. So we want to thank you all for uh, watching us and uh, putting up with our some technical difficulties we had at the very beginning. We appreciate your patience on that. Um, if you have additional questions about the tree campaign and the urban tree canopy assessment, you can reach out to Lindsay, the sustainability man manager, and there's her uh, email contact information and the website where you can learn more information about the urban tree canopy assessment. And with that, we're going to stop the recording.